This video is to help you revise bacteria, just to go over this topic and to give you a very brief summary coming up to your exams. So bacteria belong to the kingdom known as monera, and a feature of being a bacterium is firstly that these organisms are unicellular. This means that they're made up of only one cell, but the cells are prokaryotic. This means that they don't have a nucleus and they don't have membrane bound organelles. So you wouldn't find mitochondria, for example, but there are other organelles such as ribosomes zones and these are not membrane bound and that's why you find them in bacteria and ribosomes are there to produce proteins you know that's their role so let's go over bacterial cell structure so bacteria always have a cell wall and inside this cell wall is always then the cell membrane so inside the cell membrane then you'll find the cytoplasm of the cell and it's here that the dna the bacterial dna is found as this chromosome this singular chromosome bacteria sometimes have this singular loop of dna known as a plasmid and the plasmids often have these genes for antibiotic resistance and they're used in genetic engineering a lot so in addition to this some Sometimes bacteria will have tail-like structures called flagella for movement and in addition they sometimes have this slime capsule and this slime capsule is there for added protection. It's important to look at the relationship between bacteria and oxygen. So anaerobic bacteria respire without using oxygen, so they don't need oxygen to live. Then we have those facultative anaerobes that can respire with or without oxygen. It depends on if it's available. And then we have those obligate anaerobes where they cannot tolerate oxygen and oxygen can actually kill them. Most bacteria are aerobic and need oxygen for respiration and survival. There are three shapes associated with bacteria, round, rod and spiral, and you will be amazed at how often that question gets asked. So what about bacterial nutrition? How do they get their food? Well, bacteria can either make their own food, so they're autotrophic, and then there are other varieties that are heterotrophic. They cannot make their own food and they have to take in food made by another organism. So autotrophic bacteria, there can be chemosynthetic varieties where they use energy released from chemical reactions to make their food, for example, the nitrifying bacteria in the nitrogen cycle. And then there are photosynthetic bacteria that use light energy to make their own food and examples would be purple sulfur bacteria and no examples important. So heterotrophic bacteria, there are two categories, the first of which is parasitic. So parasitic bacteria take in food from a living host and they usually cause that host harm. And then you've got saprophytic bacteria. They feed on dead organic matter and so are often classed as decomposers. Bacteria reproduce asexually and the method is called binary fission. Asexual reproduction, remember, involves one parent only and no sex cells and results in the production of genetic clones. The bacterial DNA replicates. The cell elongates so it gets wider and the replicated DNA strand separates and starts to move to the other end of the cell. The cell wall and the cell membrane grow inwards and eventually two identical bacterial cells are formed. Bacteria can survive adverse or harsh conditions, for example, lack of nutrients or lack of water. And they do this by forming these structures called endospores. Endospores are really resistant to temperature and extremes of pressure, so they're very tough. So how do bacteria form these structures? The bacterial chromosome replicates and one of these chromosomes then gets encased in this tough walled multi-layered structure called an endospore. The mother cell bursts or breaks down, releasing the endospore, and it lays dormant for a very long period of time or until conditions are suitable. When conditions are favourable, it will take on water, its wall will break down, and basically the bacterial cell, then its metabolic rate increases and it can give rise to other bacterial cells by means of binary fission. So to help you understand endospores, you could consider them as being these tiny cells protected by this very tough wall. What are the factors that affect bacterial growth? Well, first of all, pH. Bacteria have enzymes and those enzymes will have optimal pHs at which they work best. A lot of bacteria don't like extremes of pressure. Temperature. Bacteria generally have a temperature range at which they grow best. It's usually between 20 and 30 degrees Celsius. As well as that external solute concentration, remember osmosis, salting and sugaring. So bacteria would have a lot of water content, cytoplasm, that contains a lot of water and if you put them into very salty or sugary solutions, so more concentrated solutions, well then they're going to lose water by osmosis and this can kill them. 
It's important that you know the bacterial growth curve. It hasn't been asked for a long time and it might be on your paper. So label the axes. Time goes on the x-axis and number of bacteria go on the y-axis and this is a logarithmic scale so that's important to know. So be able to discuss each of these stages, the lag, the log, the stationary decline and survival. So the first stage is the lag stage. This is known as the settling in stage. Bacterial numbers aren't really going up, there's no marked increase and this is because the bacteria are adapting to their surroundings. Then we move on to the log stage. This is when the bacteria are reproducing at their maximum rate. Why? Because there's lots of nutrients, not much competition and lots of space. Then we move on to the stationary phase. This is when there's no real increase or decrease in numbers because the numbers being produced by binary fission are being matched by those dying off. Then we go into the decline stage where there is a marked decrease in the numbers of bacteria. And this is possibly because there is a buildup of toxins, there's more competition and there's less food. Then finally, we have some bacteria that will survive and these survive usually by forming endospores. Make sure that you can give examples of beneficial bacteria. For example, E. coli is used in genetic engineering to make insulin. There's saprophytic bacteria, lots of different types of saprophytic bacteria that are involved in nutrient recycling. And I would revise the nitrogen cycle and carbon cycle if I were you guys. And then there's lactobacillus, which is used in production of yogurt. And there are harmful effects of bacteria as well. So there are disease causing or pathogenic bacteria such as those that cause TB and then E. coli as well is a pretty dangerous bacterium. So antibiotics haven't been asked in a very long time, so it's worth revising them. They're chemicals produced by microorganisms that prevent the growth of or kill other microorganisms without harming human tissue. So it's really important to know that antibiotics are only effective against bacterial and some fungal infections. They have no impact on viral infections and so should never be taken for viral infections. It's probably a good time to go and revise antibiotic resistance, so I would read that in my textbook if I was you and link it in with evolution. So tomorrow is the beginning of the Leaving Cert 2019 and I wish all of you, the class of 2019, the very best of luck and I hope the exams really go your way. So remember in biology, if you have time to do an extra question, do an extra question. And for my particular class, as promised, here is the candle that was lit for you on Saturday. I will be thinking of you. Best of luck.